Mm, definitely. Do you have you seen more games experiment with like stable coins in their ecosystem or like mechanisms to like reduce volatility within the ecosystem of a, a currency? Yeah, so there's there's some there are some teams that understand this is a problem. Um mm gone towards using stable coins i believe it's skyweaver um is what i'm thinking of uh and that they they've just gone full on stable coin um but the recommendation that i want to make and I'm, I'm trying to kind of promote this more as an option is having semi-stable currencies and mm -hmm. so there's there's actually a really good example of this working um so second life uh is kind of the og metaverse they've been around since 2003 and despite predating Bitcoin, they have a currency, Linden dollars, that's tradable for dollars. It's tradable as a peer-to-peer -peer medium of exchange within their metaverse. For all intents and purposes, it's functionally equivalent to a cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. uh, but they they have sort of the semi-stable model where it's not it's not backed like one to one to a dollar. It it has a fluctuating secondary market price against the dollar. Mm -hmm. But they keep it within a specific price range. And so they have reserves, which is something that a lot more teams should consider to, to back the value of your token. So say we'll have the quantity of reserves. And so you, you, you can know for sure that it will never go below the certain price. Mm -hmm. And so that, that creates user confidence in that currency. Because they think worst case scenario, I can sell it back for at least this price because those reserves are there. Mm -hmm. And in a context, you could even trust that more because you could back those reserves on chain. You wouldn't even need to trust the team. Um, but then also they add, as well as kind of that price floor, they have a price ceiling. Mm -hmm. This is very important to combat speculation because if there's no price ceiling and the price would go up as much as you want, then uh, you could have kind of these pump and dump cycles. And then that's going to reduce the stability of your currency as well. You don't know how much it's going to be worth at it a month in, in, in the future. Um, and so they could also say, we'll sell as much currency as needed at the ceiling price. And so now you have this currency that has a level of stability. It's a level of controlled stability. So we, we, we talk a lot about like the dollar is seeing a huge amount of inflation. So you're creating your own currency that it's not tied to the monetary policy decisions of any country. You can create something that's customized to the needs of your own particular economy. And also you can make some money in the process. You can have a gap between that ceiling and floor price and the difference between what you sell the currency for and buy it back for, that's either revenue to the team or it could be used as a pool for incentives for retaining users or growing your ecosystem. Um, and so this is, uh, this is something that I think should be explored much more in the Web3 context. I haven't seen it yet, but we have an example of a metaverse that's been around for, uh, for 20 years, has a 600, $650 million GDP, which is larger than like 12 countries that successfully used in this. So I think we should see a lot. We should see a lot more uh, exploring of that semi-stable model in the future. I did not know that. And that's super interesting. Right.